Hi, it's Bernstein Bell of Fear Factor, and you're watching The Age of Metal with Miguel. Hello everyone, this is Miguel with the H of Metal and I'm here with Burton Bell of Fear Factory. How are you doing, man? I'm alright. How are you? I'm pretty good. Well, um, how's the, the, the tour going so far? Uh, this is the second day and it's, uh, it's been a good start, you know, and then it's getting better every day. That's good. Well, I mean, uh, let's just start talking about the industrialist you um, new album with Fear Factory. Um, it's well known, I mean, that Fear Factory managed this kind of like conceptual albums. Uh, what is the story behind the Industrialist this time around? Well, the Industrialist this time around, and the story of Man vs. Machine, this is from the perspective of the machine. The Industrialist is a sentient automaton uh, that is fighting for its own existence. Um, its creator has found it obsolete or irrelevant um, due to, because they, they have created a better version of it. So therefore the creator is trying to find it and others like it to uh, disassemble it. All right. So it's, it's fighting for its own existence. All right, the concept of man against machine is being kind of like exploded by, by by cinema. For example, Hollywood, we can see examples like Terminator, Terminator 2, and uh, The Matrix. Uh, from where um, Fear Factory got the inspiration in order to create uh, or to write about this subject? Well, from movies and stories that like The Terminator, like Blade Runner, like... Uh, uh, Ghost in the Machine, um, uh, even animation, fil even animation films like uh, uh, Ghost in the Shell, or or uh, or what is it? Oh gosh, um, I'm forgetting it. Oh my gosh, um, or movies like Body Hammer. Yeah, um, there's so many. Yeah, it's, it's it's what Dino and I have always been interested in. All right. Um, what is what happened on the industrialist that didn't happen in uh, mechanized? Um, we were more focused. Um, it was just Dino and myself and Reese uh, writing the record. Um, basically, there was less cooks in the kitchen, and we were more focused, and that's what happened. All right. Uh, this time around, the the album, besides being new, being new a new story, is a new lineup. Also, not just uh, you and Dino, but also um, Byron Stroop left the band uh, before the album and was replaced by uh, Mark Brees and um, Gene Hogland, of course, left the band as well. Um, how has been the experience of working with Matt so far? Well, working with Matt and Mike. Uh, has been great, but they didn't work on the album. Um, they came in after the album was uh, after the album was finished. But it's been great. Uh, Mike Heller is a great drummer. He uh, is a fine. He's a fresh talent, and he's got a bright future. Uh, Matt DeVries is an excellent bass player, and of course, he was the guitar player of Chimera. And it's always taken a guitar player to pay, play bass for Fear Factory. So um, this band has been more precise than ever. All right. Um, I know that Dino this time around he programmed the drums. He didn't make them, uh, or you guys didn't use uh, a seasonal uh, drummer. What do you think that what was the change? Not using a uh, uh, you know a seasonal drummer and doing the the programmation on drums. Well, John Sankey did the programming with Dino, and uh, um, the fact is this. Ever since Digimortal, when Pro Tools came on, we had a live drummer. The live drummer would record everything live into Pro Tools, and then the engineer would go into the session of the drums and move every hit to make it precise with the, with the click track. And then we would change the sounds as well of the drums. So at what point, why use even a live drummer at that point? It just took it took way too much time. Um, 
the drummer Mike was able to learn everything that Dino and John programmed. So the um, it was just basically it was efficiency. That's why we did it. It was more efficient to use drum programming than actual session drummer. Okay, the story of Fear Factory is a band that's been really forming from the beginning, changing and going in um, new lineups and changing all the time. Do you think that this time around, this is like the the beginning to a stable lineup for Fear Factory? We'll see. I mean, why does it have to be stable? Well, because they, pretty much other bands, well, pretty much other bands have like a stable lineup. But that's other bands. You know, Fear Factory is me and Dino. Okay. Doesn't matter who's on drums or who's on bass. Okay, I, I see you point in there. Um, well, actually, actually, you will. You you are a person well done, well known for uh, doing guesses in other albums. You being guest with Ministry and you being guest with Soulfly. Um, the last guess that you did was with Dutch gothic metal band Delane. Yeah. Uh, when you work on their new album, We Are the Others, uh, doing lay down the track. Where is uh, the blood? Where is the blood with Charles? Uh, with, with Charlotte Wessels. Um, how that collaboration came to be? Because I mean, you know, Fear Factory, uh, industrial band, uh, a Dutch uh, symphonic gothic metal band that. You know, you're never gonna see those crossovers. But but um, what's crazy is that we do crossover because I met the band when we played Wacken Open Air Festival in 20, 2010. Um, you know, uh, it it's, doesn't matter what kind of band you're in; everyone respects each other's music. And I know a lot of metal fans always think that metal you got got to be metal, and it's like you know what, you should you would hate me if you saw my record collection. So. Um, It became friends with the band, and you know, we, I kept in touch with them, and uh, they're really nice people. And so, um, you know, I was—we were in the studio doing the Industrialist, and I got an email from the band, and they had this track that they felt that would be a good duet with the singer Charlotte. And so, they asked me if I wanted to do it, and I said, "Send me the track." And so, I listened to it. I was like, "Yeah, this is cool." So. They, just, they asked me to do it, and I, I said yes. And so we, I did it from uh, Reese's studio, uh, recorded into Pro Tools, and sent him the tracks, and it came out really cool. Yeah, actually really cool, because I, I talked to uh, Martin a couple of weeks ago about it, and, and he was thrilled of how you, your voice fit perfectly, how it fits the track, yeah, and, and the feel of it. Yeah, it came out really good. Uh, Martin and Charlotte are both very pleased with it. Great. Well, I mean... Going back to Fear Factory, uh, this is a, a, a long uh, kind of a U.S. tour, and it was on the, you know, it, it was almost canceled because the, the shockwave was canceled. Um, you guys, after this tour, going to Japan and Sao Paulo, Brazil, just for one day, pretty much. Well, we're going, we've got three shows in South America, and then we're at... Uh, Paraguay, Venezuela, and Brazil. Which one of those ones are you first? Um, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to playing Sao Paulo because we've never played it before. You're gonna get a long response in there. Trust we'll, me. We'll see. I mean, every time we've played South America, it's been. You know, they say, "Oh yeah, you guys are huge there," and we just we get a so-so draw. So we'll see what happens. You know, I'm not holding my breath. Then you go into Japan and then uh, Australia. What you guys? Are, I mean, what are the fans over there going to be expecting for uh, uh, Fear Factory? I don't know what they're going to expect, but I'm expecting people to show up. Um, I know what we'll give them is a great show, and uh, we're going to be playing some new songs and a bunch of classic songs, and I hope they enjoy it. Great. Well, uh, to close in up, Burton, um, what is next for Fear Factory after those touring? Because pretty much the tour is going to be all over the fall and until like pretty much Christmas or before Christmas, a week before Christmas, yeah. you guys are going to come back to the stage, you know, spend time with your moms and all the stuff. Yes. Uh, what is up for um, with Fear Factory for next year? I have no idea yet. Nothing's planned yet, but we're, we're making plans, but nothing is definite. All right. Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, talk to us here at the H Metal, and good luck with the with the with the tour. The album is still kicking ass, Thank and you, you know. Know.